last week's reflection we were looking at the person of John the Baptist who came to prepare the way for people to receive Jesus. In this week's reading, which comes from John 1 verse 6, it says this about John the Baptist. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. And so he is referring, of course, to Jesus, Jesus as the light of the world that truly enlightens all people. Further on in John 8, verse 12, we read how Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So let's think about light for a minute. When the earth was formed, it says God created the earth, but it was formless and there was dark and empty and there was darkness over the surface. And the first thing God said was, let there be light. And there was. Because light is so basic to all life. There are some things that can grow in the dark, but most of the crops that all of us survive on um, uh, need sunlight to grow. But for us, it's also that we can't see without light. Another thing about light is that without light, there's no color. We tend to think that because it's dark, we just can't see the colors, but the colors aren't there because color is actually the way it reflects, that object reflects the light. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the light that shows us how things really are. And he's the light that brings color into our lives. There's a famous poem called The Hymn to Proserpine. It's written by a man called Algernon Charles Swinburne. He wrote it at the time when the Roman Emperor Constantine became a Christian and then proclaimed that the official religion of Rome was to be Christian. Now Swinburne wasn't happy about that because he liked the sensual and um, promiscuous life that Rome had been. And so he wrote, this, he wrote this poem and in this poem there's this line. Thou hast conquered, O pale Galilean, the world has grown grey from thy breath. And that's how many people see Christianity. But the truth is that when we find a relationship with Jesus, we experience a joy and a colour in our lives which we can't experience any other way. Jesus is the light of the world and he enables us to see things the way the Creator um, has created them. When Jesus made the statement that he was the light of the world, there were many other meanings that went along with this. He made the statement at the end of a festival they called the Feast of Tabernacles. And it was a week long celebration. It was remembering how God had um, guided them through the desert and up to the promised land. So on the last day of that festival, there were two um, ceremonies. The first was, a priest would go to the Pool of Siloam and collect a, a vessel of water and then it would be paraded up to the temple where it was poured out as a symbol of when the Messiah came, the whole earth would know God just the way that the water covers the seas. But the second er ceremony, which took place on the same day, the last day, they would light huge torches all around the walls of the courtyard of the temple. And this was remembering how God had protected them and guided them when they were in the desert. Exodus 13, 21, we read, As they went through the desert, by day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day and night. Neither the pillar or cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. That was his guidance. But there was also his protection, and it can be seen in Exodus 14. We read how the Egyptian army caught up with the fleeing Hebrews, and they were trapped on the shores of the Red Sea with the Egyptians coming up behind them. And so they were fearful that they were just going to be recaptured or probably killed. But we read in verse 19, Then the angel of God, who'd been travelling in front of them, he withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. And throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other. 
so neither went near each other all night long. The pillar of fire was there as a protection as well as a guide. And this is what the people were remembering when they lit all those lamps around the temple walls. They were remembering God's guidance and God's protection. Those lights could be seen from all over Jerusalem. And that was a symbol that when the Messiah came, the whole world would see and know. He would be a light to the whole world. So God's guidance, God's protection would be known by all peoples. That's the moment that Jesus took to say, I am the light of the world. And really that's just a direct claim to be God. No wonder that he found himself being attacked by the Pharisees straight afterwards. It's not a coincidence in the next chapter of John's Gospel is the story of the man who was born blind and Jesus gave him his sight. But the Pharisees still could not see that this miracle was a demonstration of who Jesus really was. The chapter ends with Jesus saying that he came into the world so the blind could see and those who thought they knew the truth would be shown to be blind. He's moved from a physical healing to that of a spiritual blindness. Jesus is the light of the world. He came to guide us along the path of truth, open our spiritual eyes to see the reality of God and his purpose for this world. Famous words of John Newton when he became a Christian. I once was lost but now I'm found, was blind but now I see. Oh,